Hey all you creative stripers out there. It's just a little more than a week until the deadline for Alice Creative Lawn Striping Competition. So I thought that I would post a video to offer some advice on doing those finishing touches on your lawn to get the greatest stripes possible. Now the first thing I suggest is to have a plan. This can be taking a aerial shot of your lawn through Google Maps or just sketching out a rough drawing to get some idea of what you want your design to be. And then you need to decide if these are gonna be directional stripes or if these are gonna be stripes that are made by having your lawn cut at different heights like I did last year. So if you are going to do a different height and, and length cut uh, design, then it's good to do it for a number of weeks because you don't want it to be a different color because you've scalped the lawn. You want it to be a different color because they're just different heights. And so then you can get a nice, you know, you still want to take a picture early in the morning so that the sunlight will cast shadows on the different heights, like an embossed paper or, or a sculpted carpet. So you can see that definition. My design last year was a combination of both. I had the swirly pattern that was cut with different heights of cut. The short length was cut at three quarters of an inch and the long length was cut at one and one eighth inch. But I also included some directional striping, uh, the straight lines that you can see in the pattern there. But in addition to the different heights of cut and the directional striping, I also outlined my design with my brush cartridge on my mower. And you, but you could do that with a push broom if you need to touch up some parts of your design. For directional striping, the stripes show up because of the way the grass is laying. If the grass is laying towards you, it'll appear darker. But if it's laying away from you, then it will be lighter and that creates the two different colors of grass. So it's important to know which direction the light will be reflecting from. So generally you want to have your lawn stripes going east and west so that it, when the sun's raising in the east or setting in the west, it'll may really make those stripes pop. When you're all done with your design and you're ready to take pictures, it's good to take it in the morning or in the evening so that you can get a good uh, angle of the sun. And also you need to get as high up as possible, maybe even use a drone so that you can get the sun behind you as much as you can so that the light on the grass that's you know leaning away from you will reflect the greatest amount of light so you can have as high a contrast as possible. Be sure to take a lot of pictures and uh, take pictures often too because last year I almost couldn't enter the competition because when I was taking my pictures my drone ran out of battery, battery power and I tried to make a quick landing and in the process crashed it into a tree and damaged it. I was able to get it back in the air but I was really limited on the kinds of pictures that I could take and I was luck lucky that I got the picture that I did that I entered with. So take a lot of pictures, take them often because you never know when you're going to have a disaster like crashing your drone or or something else. Well, I'm excited to be the judge for this year's lawn striping competition and I can't wait to see all of the entries this year. I I think they'll just get better and better. And so I'm really excited to see what everyone's gonna come up with this year. So good luck and happy striping.